Now let's discuss how to make stubs in MOB The Show 21. Now if you're new to this channel, just know that at the top right there are going to be a ton of cards popping out and those are going to consist of each and every single playlist I have on this channel on how to improve, how to do showdown, conquest, each and every single little thing you can think of. So make sure you go ahead and check that out. Also if you're new, I would love if you hit that red subscribe button, regardless of whether you're new or not, hit that like button, turn that channel notification bell on, make sure you follow me on all my socials which are listed above me, and if you want to support me the extra mile, become a member of the channel by pressing that join button next to subscribe. Now, I do have two other YouTube channels that you can go ahead and subscribe to by clicking on channel and then more blade mist section and the community tab, interact with me there. Let's talk about making stubs. We're going to go to collect first and you want to primarily go into my inventory after you open a ton of packs. If you open one or two packs, I wouldn't suggest you generally go ahead and check for duplicates. But after you open 10 to 15 to 20 plus packs, go and enter into MLB The Show 21's my inventory section. And then by each and every single section, you're going to go and look for what you have duplicates of. I've already done this for most of the players except for free agents, so I'm gonna show an example. Now, whenever a card has that no sell, it means that you cannot sell it in the community market and you can't quick sell it either, so it is yours to keep. Now, I generally, rule of thumb is, keep one of each and every single card, especially when it comes to free agents, because in roster updates, what occurs is, if any of these players are picked up and they go to a certain team, all of a sudden their price skyrockets. And when I tell you they skyrocket, I'm telling you, it skyrockets big time. It will go from being 95 stubs, for example, to 250 stubs, etc. So Lane Thomas, we see we have two of him. Now, I want to keep one always just in case he ever goes to any MOB team, just in case any team ever signs him and I'm looking to complete the collection of that team. I will already have Lane Thomas, so I don't need to go ahead and purchase him. I would go ahead and sell the duplicate I have of his for 142 stubs. You undercut whatever price is on the left by one in order to go ahead and get your pricing or your listing as the priority in terms of of persons to sell or buy. If someone's looking to buy it, yours will be the first one. If you're looking to sell one, you have to overcut basically, or if you're looking to buy one, you have to overcut the sellable price. And if you're looking to sell one, you're gonna have to undercut the buy now price. Just a little rule of thumb there as well. So then we're gonna go to the second method of making stubs in MLB The Show 21, which is going to be flipping cards in general. You're gonna head over to the marketplace and you can do it for any of these categories as long as you find a category or as long as you find a substantial difference when it comes to the buy now and sell now prices. For example, we look at a card like Tom Seaver who is currently selling for 185k, we'll say 186k, if you were looking to buy him right this second. And if you were looking to sell him right this second, someone would be offering 137.5k, we'll say 138k, in order for you to sell them instantly. Now, if I was interested in flipping cards and I had a good amount of stubs to go ahead and buy this Tom Seaver or Ryan Sandberg, excuse me, I might have said Tom Seaver, I would go ahead and put a buy order for 138K. If someone sells him to me instantly for 138K, what I would do is I would instantly create a sell order for 185K, and if he gets sold for that, when you take the 10% cut from 185K, we'll go ahead and create the sell order just so you guys know that my math isn't wrong, you're gonna be making 166.5K. Now keep in mind, you just bought that card for 138K. So when you do the differences between 166K and 138K, you're gonna be making roughly, I would want to say 18K to 28K, 138K. Yeah, you're gonna be making like 28K, 28.5K per, Ryan Sandberg, you actually go ahead and sell. And this is not only for players that are diamonds, this works for golds, this works for silvers, this works for bronzes. If you go to different sections, such as equipment, 
this works for equipment as well from silver equipment to gold equipment to diamond equipment you just need to find the differences that once you sell the card after the 10 percent cut you're still making a large profit and then you scale up you can start with common players and after you make yourself let's say 5k advance to bronze players after you make yourself 5k advance to silver and it's going to get incremental in terms of the profit because the higher the rarity usually the bigger the disparity is that's just a rule of thumb there you always want to keep one of the cards although if you're doing the duplicate way of selling cards if you're flipping cards you don't care you just want to make the biggest profit in terms of the profit margin the third way you can actually go ahead and make major stubs in mlb the show 21 and this is something that a lot of people might have done already a lot of people might have just completely forgotten about it as well is by going to the collection section and then just collecting players now keep in mind whenever you do collect the player you are keeping that player forever it will turn the player from having nothing on the icon or let's say a uniform having nothing on the icon to having a no sell look at this example we just went ahead and collected hartford so now it has a no sell we can never sell this uniform we would never be able to exchange the uniform and it's ours to keep forever so make sure whenever it says collect three collect five instead of pressing auto select in order for them to select it for you make sure that you are personally selecting players that you know for sure or uniforms whatever the case may be make sure that whatever it is you're selecting you know for sure you want to keep forever now this is going to be the case for live series players after you uh, collect a certain amount of live series players per team you're gonna get a certain amount of stubs after you collect all of them you're gonna get a player card it could either be a gold or a diamond it depends on whether or not the team has a diamond on the squad usually teams that have few diamonds get a low overall diamond card teams with a large amount of diamonds usually get a higher overall diamond card as you guys saw right there the differences between the Orioles the Red Sox and the Yankees now as I said previously, you're gonna want to go through each and every single section and see what you're willing to collect permanently for the rest of the year in order to make some stubs. Next up is going to be Showdown. Showdown is another great way for you to go ahead and make stubs. Now the starter showdown is free, but you don't really make too many stubs, but you still make stubs in general. So for example, it's free to join. You just draft the team and you're gonna be down four to zero in the final boss now i'm pretty sure this is on rookie difficulty but it doesn't even matter as i said previously you are going to be down four to zero you're going to be making 500 stubs a pop each time you enter but this isn't even the most effective way to make stubs when it comes to showdown the most effective way is actually doing team affinities because yes although you pay 500 stubs in total once you look at each and every single reward if you pass the entire showdown with eight out of eight missions completed you will be making a profit of 1600 and you might be saying how is that possible well beating this mini boss it gives you 500 subs so you're making 500 subs back it's basically a free entry into showdown and then each one of the mini bosses or excuse me not mini bosses many moments gives you 100 stubs so there are six in total that's 600 stubs and then beating the final boss is going to give you a thousand stubs plus team affinity points or team affinity vouchers which translate into points that once you go ahead and progress in the team affinity program not only is it going to give you stubs it's also going to give you packs and it's also going to give you diamond players to upgrade your team with so showdown is another way for you to make stubs and you don't even have to be each and every single moment you can literally skip to the final boss if you're skilled enough and just pay 500 stubs and make 500 a pop plus get five vouchers every single time but if you're like me that just likes taking advantage and getting each and every single stub possible you're gonna go ahead and 100 percent play each and every single mini game mini boss etc and walk out for 20 minutes of work with 1,600. Now, yes, of course, flipping cards is going to be a lot more effective or even just going through your inventory and selling your duplicates, 
or even doing collections is going to be a lot more effective but this just translates into working towards multiple things at once so in general it just focuses on a lot more now I have guides to show down just in case anyone is interested. It's probably going to appear throughout the video in cards. And I do have a playlist on how to show down as well. And I have a special video coming out that is going to help a lot of you with showdown in general. And then the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to making stubs in MLB the show, it's going to be looking at cards that are available in exclusive programs. For example, you look at the first inning program, it's going to allow you to choose two of these silver players. Now the first inning program, it never comes back. The first inning program has players like these golds that never come back into the game again. Once you have played the first inning program, and once you have achieved these golds, they never come back. So what I would suggest you go ahead and do is as time progresses and a lot more people are completing these and these cards drop in price drastically, I would buy tons of them. I would probably have 10 of each plus the one you own and you're looking to keep forever. So that's going to be 11. And then in the long run, let's say a month, two months, three months, four months from now, as a new collection reward comes out, for collecting a certain amount of players from each and every single set, those players are gonna skyrocket in price. And you're gonna be able to pay, let's say, let's look even right now at the prices that they have. Let's say you paid 1,500 a pop for each and every single one of them. You're gonna be able to make an even bigger profit for each and every single one of them. So who is a card that is available there? It has to be Legends. Let me just filter by legends to make this entire thing go a lot quicker. We're going to go to legends. So Joe Morgan, for example, he's selling for 1775 In the future, that card, once the first inning program is done and everybody is forced to move on to the second inning program, no one will be able to go back and obtain these rewards again. So if you stack up and get a bunch of them once their prices really deflate, in the future when their, pli their prices go up to 10k, 15k, 20k, as far and drastic as 50k sometimes, you're gonna be able to make a large profit. But as I said, this is a long-term investment. This isn't something that you're gonna quickly be able to flip and basically get a hit on. This is a long-term investment, but those are the ways that I would advise you to go ahead and make your stubs. The selling duplicates is something you want to do after every single pack opening. Flipping cards in the community market is really effective. The only downside is that there is extreme latency in the community market, so that can make it a lot annoying in general. Collections are a one-time thing, so once you do them, unfortunately, you can't get any more stubs from there. But if you haven't done them, you might as well take advantage. And then showdown is something you can always do and make a profit each and every single time. And then long-term investments, if you have the stubs and you're willing to have the patience as well, is something that I, can, that I personally recommend everyone doing. Now, if you did end up enjoying today's content, please make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that red subscribe button as well. Turn on the channel notifications. Follow me on all my socials. Have a blessed day and night. Stay positive, stay safe, stay blessed. And I will catch you all in the next one. Peace out.